Discerning Hearts provides content dedicated to those on the spiritual journey. To continue production of these videos, prayers, and more, go to discerninghearts.com and click the donate link found there or inside the free Discerning Hearts app to make your donation. Thanks and God bless. Discerning Hearts, in cooperation with the Poor Clare Nuns of the Monastery of Our Lady of Guadalupe and Cluny Media presents excerpts from Come, Lord Jesus, Meditations on the Art of Waiting, written by Mother Mary Francis. In this episode, Mother Mary Francis reflects on Right Nutrition. Jesus took the seven loaves and the fish, gave thanks, broke the loaves, all ate, and were satisfied. Matthew chapter 15, verses 36 and 37. We all know in daily experience in this blessed Advent season that there are such rich viands spread out before us in the liturgy that one hardly knows where to linger. One thinks, This must be the theme of my prayer today. And then the next responsory comes, and then this reading comes, and then this lesson comes. In a beautiful, provocative homily by St. Bernard at Matins, we read a wonderful phrase, Feed on goodness. We should, spiritually, watch what we are eating. Now, each of us has full command over what our thoughts feed upon. There is a great thrust in our times about nutrition. There is finally a reaction against the eating of junk foods, which not only provide no nourishment, but do great harm to the physical system. Reputable doctors are saying that we are what we eat. Sometimes people deliberately feed themselves on wrong foods, junk foods, which taste good at the moment, please the palate at the moment, but give no nourishment for the body's growth and sustenance and little by little work destructive havoc on the body. We can do this spiritually as well. Feed on goodness. How can we live a spiritual life? How can we be the force that we are called to be in the church of God, beginning with the local church of our community, if our diet is very destructive, if instead of feeding on goodness, we feed on self? Do we sometimes feed our thoughts on Impatience, feed them on self-pity. Do we feed on irritability? Do we feed on grudging giving? Do we feed on selfishness instead of feeding on goodness? St. Bernard says, Remember to eat your bread or your heart will wither. We must remember to eat our bread, to feed on goodness or our spiritual life will wither. It really will. What are some of those junk foods of the spiritual life? One junk food is certainly, pardon me for the forthright term, the greasiness of self-pity. We know that physically the elements of grease were very destructive of the human body. That grease of self-pity eats away at the strength of one's spiritual life. We want to think about that. Doctors are saying, don't eat all this grease. This is why the United States leads the world in heart problems. But what do we eat spiritually? What slows down the spiritual heart? What makes it sluggish? What makes it arrhythmic? What gives it bad fibrillations? Certainly, self-pity. Doctors also warn against an abundance of spices, the insistence that everything has to be spiced up, as they say. Well... Is this not impatience in the spiritual life? Impatience and irritability, the junk foods of the spiritual life, provide pleasure by the moment and destroy us by the hour. Then there is surely the junk food of sentimentality in the spiritual life. I have sweet thoughts and I have sweet resolutions and that's it. I often do not get to anything deeper than that. Sentimentality will certainly not take us very far at all in our spiritual lives. And yet we know we can be tempted to rest in that. We want to feel good when we pray. 
We make easy resolutions, which we do not follow through with, with the strength to keep. Living on the upper surface of our own life, without really going down into the depths of it. This is certainly a junk food comparable to too many sweets on the physical level. Another thing that they say is destroying the health of our American people. And we can do this in the spiritual life and then get into the practice that if prayer doesn't taste good, I don't pray. If this really takes effort and I don't feel myself sweetened, then I don't make the effort. That is another junk food. Besides sentimentality and self-pity and the impatience of spiciness, there is the desiccated food, which is a lack of generosity. I don't want to get involved. I don't really want to give myself. I don't give my full share in community. Each one's share is everything she can possibly give. If we are not giving that full share, then we are feeding spiritually on a dried-out diet. Desiccated foods which have lost their nutritive value. Then, the last example is poison food. What could that be? We know it could be only one thing, uncharity. We are eating poison if we are fostering unkind thoughts, uncharitable rememberings, playing little records of criticism within us. We need to look at these things, all these ugly junk foods of the spiritual life, before we can turn our heads and look at the real nutriments. Of course, there are just the opposite of all these things. Instead of sentimentality, there is perseverance in prayer. What does it matter how I feel? It is God I am concerned about, just to be there with him, to respond to him in all kinds of weather. That's all that matters. That is the true food. Instead of the greasiness of self-pity, there is gratitude. To be so grateful that God thought of creating me, that God thought of me worth redeeming, that God actually called me to this very rare vocation. Gratitude and self-pity are utterly incompatible. They were not to be roommates. They will not abide at the same time in one heart. Then, instead of that desiccated, nutritionless food of holding back, we want to totally give, giving everything that is asked of me and more than is asked of me. There is a wonderful reward for doing everything that is asked of me. I see a lot of things I can do that I wasn't even asked to do. Then, instead of the junk food of impatience and irritability, we must foster sweetness and gentleness. The gentleness, which is always one of the great characteristics of strength. Finally, instead of that poison food of uncharity, there is love. Love in season and out of season. St. Bernard says, feed on goodness and remember to eat your bread. In all of these circumstances, remember to do that. We usually don't forget to come to the refectory. As far as I can see, everybody shows up faithfully three times a day because we wouldn't be able to live our lives, to do our work, to pray if we did not have our nourishment. But we have to be told this spiritually. Remember to eat your bread or your heart will wither away. When St. Bernard says, feed on goodness, He is repeating in different words what St. Paul says. Everything that is lovely, everything that is admirable, everything that is lofty, let this be the substance of your thoughts. This is what we feed on. As we move into this week of Advent, we need to improve our diet. We need to feed steadily on goodness so that we can be, with God's grace, prepared to meet him at Bethlehem. God is swift to do good. Sometimes we are slow, aren't we? This is no time to be slow. We have to feed on goodness as a steady diet in these weeks, on every occasion looking for this nutritious food of goodness. 
Let us help one another in this. Because just as physically well-nourished person shows this in her complexion, her gait, so do rightly nourished spiritual persons show this to one another. When someone is continually feeding on goodness, it shows. We need that example. We all see the beauty of right behavior, of charity, of gentleness, of stability in doing good, of fidelity. And this makes us want to look like that too. You've been listening to an excerpt from Come, Lord Jesus, Meditations on the Art of Waiting. For more episodes in this series, visit discerninghearts.com or you can find it inside the free Discerning Hearts app. To obtain a copy of the book, Come, Lord Jesus, visit cluneymedia.com. Discerning Hearts is a 501c3 nonprofit Catholic apostolate dedicated to evangelization and spiritual formation. To learn how you can support our mission, visit discerninghearts.com.